Um, you, uh, in the California Law Review, wrote this, um, quote, diversity enhances the quality of decision-making in addition to analyzing and applying the law. Judges have to make determinations that draw not so much upon legal acumen, but on understanding of people and human experiences. Such experiences inform assumptions that affect legal decisions. At trial and in evidentiary hearings, judges have access to have to assess credibility of witnesses. A witness's testimony may seem more critical, cr credible if it is consistent with the judge's knowledge or experience and conversely less credible if it remains outside the judge's experience. Simply put, a judge's lifetime experiences affect the willingness to credit testimony or understand the human impact of legal rules upon which the judge, judge must decide. These determinations require a judge to draw upon something that is not found in the case reports uh, that line the walls of our chambers. Rather, judges draw upon the breadth and depth of their own life experiences, upon the knowledge and understanding of people and of human nature, and inevitably one's ethnic and racial background contribute to those life experiences. Um, do, you, do these, uh, does that statement accurately reflect your judicial philosophy? Well, let me put that in context, uh, if I can, Senator. Uh, the point I was trying to make in that law review piece was that there is a benefit to having a diverse judiciary, that the judgments we make, some of those are based on deductive reasoning and analysis of law, and sometimes they're based on more intuitive analysis, judging the witness uh, credibility, uh, making a decision with respect to bail or sentencing. Uh, that requires an understanding of, of human factors and, and different uh, in, in, in various contexts. And the point I was trying to make is that the broader the breadth of experience, both for an individual judge and collectively as a court, I think the better uh, the ability of, 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 of judges to make those assessments. And I tried to give some illustrations in that piece about how the collegiality amongst judges, whether it's a formal exchange amongst the Supreme, members of the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeal or the informal exchange that often happens in the district court, in the hallways, and in the dining rooms, that we learn from each other about uh, various perspectives, different perspectives, and life well, experiences. Well, you know, the average litigant would be nervous if he thought a decision was being made on what you judges talked about in the dining hall or in the hallways. I mean, the case should be decided, should it not, on the evidence introduced and the law properly applied to that evidence. No, and I agree with that fully, and I didn't mean to suggest that cases are decided in the hallways. Well, I but just the, get... I'm just raising this point because right. it's something we've talked about before. I suppose your experience has um, might help you have insight into a witness's credibility. Everybody has different experiences, and it, it might. But I was a little understand, uh, concerned that you say you might understand the human impact of legal rules upon which a judge uh, must decide. You know, the oath says that a judge um, uh, should do equal justice to the poor and the rich. I assume you would take that oath and intend to follow that. Absolutely. I did take that oath when I was sworn as a magistrate judge. And that you would uh, be impartial. Absolutely. Um, with, I know you served, um, what, 18 years as counsel for the American Civil Liberties? Uh, 16 years, actually. 16. And... Um, now, you were on, uh, on their payroll as a, as a as staff attorney. A staff attorney. Um, well, you know, the ACLU has filed some excellent cases. Um, they filed some I'm not comfortable with. My time up. Well, uh, I, I'm sorry. It, it, it You're is, right. But I was giving you as uh, a in my role as chairman, I'll, I'll, I was giving you leeway uh, because you're the distinguished ranking member, um, and I was torn, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> but I guess your time is is up, and I would. Uh, uh, well, one thing, would, would Senator you like, Franken it, it always has in a, a tremendous skill at timing. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Senator Feinstein. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I think I know where Senator Sessions is going, 
And um, uh, let me say this to him. Um, Judge Chen has been a very fair magistrate judge for eight years. I've tested this because I also am aware he's been a fierce advocate prior to that time. And um, I might have some differences of opinion with some of the things that I'm going to raise one in a moment. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, he has been examined by a Republican screening committee and by a Democratic screening committee for the position of magistrate judge. And everybody has found he's fair. I'd like to just read on this subject one comment because it's of the Coalition of Northern California Asian American Bar Associations, and it's this. He has made a successful transition from a zealous advocate <laughs> to a balanced and conscientious adjudicator who is committed to the impartial and active administration of justice. Judge Chen has earned a reputation as an even-handed jurist who is constantly mindful of the role that judges fulfill in our society. Well, that's a, a, I think a person can be a zealous advocate and be a great judge. So let me ask a question uh, that takes you back a ways, uh, because uh, Judge Chen, according to the website of the ACLU, it believes the death penalty is in, inherently violates the constitutional ban on cruel and unusual punishment and guarantees of due process and equal protection. Um, do you agree with that? Well, those views are not the views of the Supreme Court, and I, I abide by the uh, rulings of the Supreme Court, and I will tell you that I have one death penalty case that I handled as a lawyer. Uh, in that case, uh, we did not bring a broad challenge, a, a, a sweeping challenge. It was very fact-specific about the case, uh, the ineffective assistance of counsel that this individual had and mistakes that were made by the trial judges. It was a very narrowly focused case, uh, and we brought that case to ensure that the person had uh, fair process. It was not a broad challenge. Well, great attention is provided uh, on, on those cases by the courts, and that's um, uh, legitimate. But I guess my question is, uh, do you believe that, in, that uh, do you agree with this position of the organization you work for for 16 years? Well, I've never, other than that one case, I've never in, been involved in any of the policy making or any of the uh, broader efforts of the ACLU on that issue, uh, and, and I would affirm again that as a district judge, I see my role very differently today than as an advocate uh, some 15 years ago. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Senator Feinstein. Any more questions? Well, uh, in, in that case, I'd like to uh, thank Senator Feinstein and the distinguished ranking member. I also want to thank each of you uh, for your testimony today. You're all very impressive. Uh, and uh, uh, I will I hold the hearing open for one week for submission of questions for the nominees and other materials. The hearing is adjourned. Thank you.